online radio. Welcome to the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. Cause you make me feel alive. I've been locked out of heaven. A mix of today's hits and hard to find favorites. Combined with the most entertaining and intriguing talk anywhere. This is your sound. This is the sound of Universal Broadcasting Network. At UBNRadio.com. Welcome to Life by the Numbers with celebrity numerologist Michelle Arbaugh. Broadcast on UBN Radio from the Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood. Exploring topics of spiritual growth, current affairs, celebrity news, and more through the lens of numbers. And we're live in 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Time today, fabulous, and but although my mic is having a little bit of a, a situation here, it keeps dropping on me. So if, uh, if you can't hear me for a second, it's because my mic decided it didn't want to cooperate. Okay, so I have a guest this week. I know I haven't had a guest in a couple weeks, and you know I was telling John that I felt I just I couldn't get along with myself, let alone bring on a guest. So so I just I had to have a moment. But I have a fabulous fabulous guest on today. Dr. Michelle Cohen, uh, thank you so much for coming. I mean, we Aww. always have the best time, don't we? We too, yeah. and it's great to be here on your show. Thanks. Well, I couldn't think of a better guest, especially now, because it, I think it just seems like, especially with this Mercury and retrograde thing going on, yeah. and, and that new moon that we had. Wow. And I'm not an astrologer, of course, yeah. but you know, I always follow um, astrology too, because to sure. me, it's like another way to say see yeah. the same truth, right? But it, the energies have been so hard lately. I don't know how you felt with what's been going on astrologically, but I have found it's just been really like trudging through mud. And so <laughs> relationship stuff has been front and center for a lot of people. So what better guest than to bring on mm -hmm. Dr. Michelle Cohen, who not only is a psychologist, but she's also a body language expert, which is so cool to me because I am totally an observer. You know, mm -hmm. I'm always looking yeah. at people. I'm always saying, you know, what's going on? You know, the body signals are very important to me. Mm -hmm. And I think because I'm an intellectual, I, I sure. really tune into that. So yes. I think it's going to be so neat. She does um, some of the profiling for Entertainment Tonight, which I think is so so cool and Thanks. she actually did mm -hmm. was it Lindsay Lohan and uh, right and Lance Armstrong yes that yeah. was really a lot of fun well I you know I'm always talking about Lindsay Lohan because right. she's just one of those mixed up energies you know like she from, is from an astrological yes. from a numerological all of the perspectives right <laughs> she's just, I bet she's fascinating yeah. for sure okay so today we're not going to really follow the um, the schedule per se we're going to just kind of wing it because we love to do that don't we Michelle sure we, we do just totally love to Michelle's wing it. love to wing it and because so, it's body language right yes. it, what better than to wing it exactly <laughs> we're just watching well each said. other <laughs> <That's> <laughs> so right. we'll do that and also usually usually I'll have segments but today uh, I'm just gonna we're gonna focus on this focus on relationships John and I had a good conversation uh, last week or no it was a week, week before four. week before yes and I had someone call in from New York who's gonna call Ooh. in today actually and we're gonna kind of bring him in in the latter part of the show Great. and talk about that topic a little further because I think Michelle could probably shed some insight on that and and uh We'll talk about all kinds of things, but let's start with um, talking a little bit about you because oh. I wanted to. Your bio is incredible. I mean, wow, you've really um, <laughs> carved a niche out for yourself in the the world of psychology because I think that's really not mainstream when it comes to, to right, you know, psychology and stuff like that. It's kind of yeah. bordering on spirituality. Some of the things you've done or some right. of the things you focused on. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah I absolutely. Love that. I try to do that sometimes, not to get too far off, but sort of from a cognitive behavioral point of view when I'm doing my media stuff. And that means, you know, thinking about what you're thinking, thinking about your body, yes. and then utilizing some of the spiritual concepts of mm -hmm. empowerment along with it. So, right. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So let me take a look at this. Okay. So yeah. I, you know, I've known you for a little while yeah. now and I know what you do, but um, so you are a licensed psychologist, right. talk show host, television and radio, relationship, communication, body language, and personality <laughs> profiling expert. 
Say that really fast. <laughs> yeah, right. I know it's a lot. <laughs> okay, so you, yeah, she provides news, entertainment, reality, and other media formats with a psychological spin and understanding of news makers, celebrities, mm-hmm. personality profiling, and news events in our society. Mm-hmm. And you specialize in helping people communicate to have better relationships, understanding people's body language and profiling people's personalities. I love this because cool. I work a lot with relationships too. Yes, and I think it do. always yeah. goes back to that. No yeah. matter what I'm doing, whether it's a name analysis or right. you know, a birth date chart, it doesn't matter. It's always, well, can you tell me about this person? Or can you <laughs> right. tell me about my connection with this so-and-so? And yeah. so it always comes down to that. And I think that if you cool. think about you know, our interaction with other people, it all boils down to relationships. Unless it really does. Yeah. I mean, unless we're in a cave and you know, no kidding. Living as a hermit. Exactly. Yeah. Or and it also boils down to how we feel about ourselves, yes. how we relate to others. Yes. You know, and that's and what it's about. And people forget too. that part. I think. Yeah. Yeah. The, the whole relationship with yourself. Exactly. I mean, that is like, if you don't have that, if you don't have that in check, and that is you know something you really understand, then right. forget it. Exactly. You're always going to have those relationship struggles. Right. And drama. Okay. So you've been on Entertainment Tonight. You have been on the Hallmark channel home and family show Mm -hmm. cbs radio Mm -hmm. wow did that a long time Mm -hmm. did that a long time and then la talk radio yeah yes yeah very nice okay and you also write for valley news group right three newspapers oh yeah the valley news group owns three separate newspapers so i've sort of become their psychological columnist on relationships and whatever you know kind of issues they want me to talk about hey can you do a blurb on yes i don't know (laughs) yeah, <laughs> whatever. And How people can also, get along better or whatever. Oh, totally, totally. Yeah. I'd love to see that, actually. I didn't okay. even realize you did that. And then Super. the LA, LA County Government's Professional Training Program. That was done a long time ago. Mm-hmm. And um, I did that for a production company because they were selling it on, uh, I think it was like Webby Health or one of those medical yes. things. And the LA County Department um, uh, decided to take it for people who wanted to find out about how they could protect themselves and understand threatening body language. Yes. This was a lot for the elderly or disabled, a lot of people. And also it was good for, um, you know, help with the police helping them teach people how to defend themselves and see signs that might be threatening to them. So that was cool. Yeah, that was fun. That's, that's an important thing. Yeah. Okay, so we're going to talk about body language. And, you know, the first person that comes to mind for me <laughs> is Justin Bieber because he oh my is, gosh. he's such, he's kind of like, Lindsay Lohan in a lot of ways, right? He's got the saying all the wrong things, doing all the wrong things (laughs) in public. So I'd be curious to know, I mean, I know this is kind of putting you on the spot, but do you, have you done anything with him or kind of looked at him? I have not. Yeah, I've looked at him. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. This guy is such a talented young man, as you know, he's a little. But socially and emotionally. Talented guy. Thank you. He, of course, (laughs) (laughs) I'm like channeling Justin Bieber right now. (laughs) <laughs> he developed his, you know, craft yes. when he was very young. Yes. He was playing music when he was a child. Yes, and he was. He is so talented and gifted. However, mm-hmm. his maturity hasn't caught up with his talent. Yes. So he's always sort of testing that adolescent young adult, as we call it, testing yes. um, their limits. Uh-huh. And that's what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Um, if you look at him in uh, some interviews, he's very rehearsed. And I, I yes. would say that he is rehearsed because he's rehearsed for his stage shows, his videos. Yes. He's very good. He knows how to rehearse. He knows how to do the TV thing. But if you catch him off guard and see him on some of his YouTube uh, oh, really? inappropriate videos uh-huh. and his latest. Yes, yes, yes. Oh, my gosh. Racist rants that he had when he was very young. Yes. Scary stuff. Yeah. So um, he does put up a facade and he's very good at it. Um, his body language, of course, it's hard to read because every situation is different when mm-hmm. he's caught off guard. Yes. Um, he has a lot of defensive positions that I see when he's talking to people. And yes. the defensive positions are a lot of our movements trying to express something almost in an angry manner. Have you seen him being interviewed, you know, where he, he's like this and he's, ta- you know, so yes. he's doing that kind of thing. Well, I can't say anything. I'm, I talk with my hands a lot. But yeah, <laughs> yeah, <'cause laughs> that's I'm, right. Because I'm East Coast Canadian. Right. But. No, girl. <laughs> But this could mean, you know, uh, right. but I know, and it, you know, I have yeah. um, friends who are Italian and He's they say, I was doing hands. my Italian yeah. thing, but yeah. it's almost an anger shaking yes. that he has. And if you watch, um, he'll, he's always moving. Now, 
I haven't researched his background, so I don't know if he's ADHD or what. Yes. But a lot of people who have this are moving their legs a lot and moving their hands. He is tipping his, tapping his toe, rather. He's always moving. Oh, yeah. So I, I think, think I've seen that. That's nerves. That's yes. when you see him interviewed and he's bopping in a chair, you know, he's moving up and down yes. like a little kid. Yeah. That's anxiety and yes, nervousness. Yes. He may be caught off guard by the interviewer. He may be feeling uncomfortable about some of the things he's done. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. yeah, that's my take on him. Mm -hmm. He's very polished, and yet he's still a little kid when caught off guard. And he mm -hmm. does have defensive postures. Yes, he does. So. Yeah, I agree with that. So what are some of the key signals? Like, for example, if someone's lying or if someone is, you know, mm -hmm. I don't know. I'm tr that's the first mm -hmm. one that comes to mind. But definitely, mm -hmm. I'm sure you have other categories. But mm -hmm. what would be some of the signals for that? Um, to tell if someone's lying, let's just say whatever, in an interview situation or a dating situation, there's all sorts of types of cues that you can look for. And it's from the face, facial gestures, all the way down. Right. So um, it's difficult to tell. Again, culturally, people are different. So yes. certain signals mean certain things. Um, and also, we look at the eyes a lot. Mm -hmm. Sociopaths, as they say, people with antisocial personality disorder, yes. they know how to look at someone straight on and give a very calm presence. I love to watch those ID shows. I bet you do too. You know, those mm -hmm. crime shows on oh, TV, yeah. right? Oh, yeah, totally. And I can always tell someone who has antisocial or sociopathology because they're looking at the police officer in those interviews mm -hmm. and they're they never shake their eyes off them and they're wow. they're usually wide and they're straight i call it creepy eyes mm -hmm. so <laughs> right <Yeah. laughs> so yeah. um one of the things to look for are the eyes yeah. is to see if someone is really connecting with you normally yes. not creepy eyes yes you know but yeah. looking off to the side now in in case of uh, the case of lindsay lohan's interview with oprah what i noticed as an example she didn't really lie that much i don't think Really? I think she was she was laying it out there where she did, uh -huh. uh, as I call it, uh, just sort of fabricate. In other words, finding the best answer. Uh, okay, yeah, <laughs> right yeah. to a hard question. Mm -hmm. She would do what I call right eye flashes, and that many times means I'm thinking of a good answer. Creativity, right eye flash. Oh, right? you mean looking I'm going to create an answer. Right. Yes. Hmm. Yeah. And I've if you look that. in that yeah. interview, left sometimes means that people are recalling something oh. so if someone's looking up to the left a lot of times they're going to recall something right. that is probably the truth right may be creativity right. so we're looking for those kinds of signs uh -huh. um, looking down it means they're ashamed of something they don't really want to come forth with the truth so that's another cue someone's looking down it may mean they're shy or embarrassed as mm -hmm. well they may be it, and again it's cultural yes but um, those are some of the signs with the eyes. When someone is uh, making contrary statements to their body, in other words, who did I see the other day on TV who was interviewed, and they were saying something about, of course I didn't do it. Oh, yes. Uh huh. <laughs> see, the body, will, yes. the body knows seconds before. Yes. The body knows before the brain. Yeah what's going to be happening and coming out of the mouth. So yeah. this guy in this interview, and I, I think it was one of those um, identification or ID shows mm -hmm. with a criminal, and he was saying, I would never kill my wife, <gasps> nodding his head. Yes. I would never, and I went, oh, he's guilty, oh my gosh. So that's you know contrary body movements yeah. as well. Someone may be protecting themselves as well. You look for that. Um, of course, it's no brainer. I was just no ask you about that The one. arms, yes. you know, the, yes. the you yeah. know protecting themselves and that. Yeah. Also, something that Lance Armstrong did that was very interesting in his interview with Oprah was that he did self comforting moves. Uh -huh. So that means they're very uncomfortable uh -huh. about answering. So he, if you see someone wringing their hands, uh -huh. doing this kind of thing, or holding their hands like this, especially tight to their body, but right. if they're clasping mm -hmm. and they have a tight leg cross, really tight, they're like, oh my gosh, can I get through this? Yes. Can I? So it may mean lying or fabricating, mm -hmm. but it may also mean that they're really uncomfortable. Right. But those are just, you know, some general things to look at. Mm -hmm. uh, about you know the concept of of lying and again it, it's not a complete science but you study clusters of movements so if someone is saying the contrary 
right. uh, to what their body says. Their eyes are really uncomfortable, and they're darting off to the right to try to create answers, and their body language is self conf Boy, you've got a cluster there that you can say, whoa, these signs indicate this person is fabricating. Mm -hmm. So... That's wow. what I look for. Yeah, I love that. I'm always looking <laughs> at people for the signs, you know, that, that classic one, you know, like this mm -hmm. that, that you were talking about. I mean, I see that all the time. I do it sometimes. Yeah, I do too. Yeah, yeah, so there's certain, I guess, generalized cues that are pretty common. Sure. So let's talk about the dating world, because we were talking well. about last, or the week before last, sorry. <laughs> were um, yeah. About the whole... Um, yeah. You know, the signals and signs in the dating right. world, and, you know, yeah. we, we got on the topic of... Um, the gay and lesbian group because sure. it's such a difficult group. I mean, it's, yeah. you know, I mean, the dating world for them is extra challenging. So it's yes, like, it is. yeah. So we, we got on that topic and we were talking about, um, you know, the, the dating and the whole mm -hmm. first connections. Right. So I'm, I guess I'd like to know from you, what are some of the common first date signals or, you know, how can you read those things? Cause I'm sure that, yeah. you know, if, yeah. if there's no spark or, or no um, chemistry, then there's going to be different signals than if there were. Mm -hmm. so. it de yeah, and it depends. You know, I, I prepared for this. You Thank you for preparing <laughs> me for this one. Yeah, because I didn't give you much to go on, did I? <laughs> no, it was good. It was good. Um, but what you look for, yeah. you know, in a dating situation. So you're saying um, we go out on a date with someone. We're just yes. meeting someone. Yes. Whoever it is, right. whatever gender preference, whatever. Well, of course. Of yes. course. No, I was whatever, just whoever. reference okay. to that but group. Yeah, yeah, how difficult it is sometimes to, yeah. you know. So um, what we have to do, again, are look for some of those signs that I was talking about. Mm -hmm. In the first several meetings. <laughs> yes. Um, let me preface also by saying that people have baseline movements. Uh -huh. So um, what we try to do is study baseline. We see people in interviews like Lance. I watched Lance on a bunch of interviews and sort of got a baseline for what is typical of him. Mm -hmm. And then when he's in a certain interview, you go, whoa, that popped out. I haven't seen that before. So the problem is, is on a date, you don't know. So after several dates, you can sort of get a feeling for what might be typical movements of people. But of course, if you like the person, you want to show open body right. movements. Um, and if you don't like the person and want to subconsciously show them that you're not okay, you'll just have your friend call and say, there's an emergency. Oh my <laughs> gosh, my aunt's sick. I have to go pick her up. You know, that yeah. kind of thing. But um, <laughs> so if you want to come off like you like someone, use those open body right. uh, movements. Mm -hmm. So eye contact, not creepy eyes, occasional glancing around, you know, but mm -hmm. really looking at the person if you want to show them you like them. Open movements. Keep your palms open and your hands pretty comfortable out there. Keep your body towards them mm -hmm. um, to let them know that you're really interested in them. Sometimes if you can see their legs, if you're at a bar situation, if you cross your legs towards that person, that may indicate that you're more into Everything is kind of for that person. Right. And again, you don't want to creep them out. No. You know, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and the spatial thing's really important too. Uh -huh. Yeah. Because, uh, you know, again, in some cultures, mm -hmm. European cultures, Mm -hmm. specifically, um, his, you know, uh, South American cultures and stuff. Spatial issues are not a biggie. We Americans are just paranoid. The bubble, right? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Right? I have a big bubble. And yeah. I, I have a hard time with that, you know, people being in my close proximity. I have a hard time with Do that. You? And then that's yeah, when yeah. I get defensive or when Do I pull. Yeah, 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 totally. yeah, you feel kind of like, mm, yeah, 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 like that. So it doesn't necessarily mean yeah. I don't like you. It's just right, you're sure. in my circle. <laughs> exactly. And you're yeah. used to a specific kind of spatial Comfort, thing. Yeah. Comfort zone. Yeah. Comfort zone, exactly. Mm -hmm. So I would say you know, do a comfortable spatial thing, not too close to creep someone out. Yes. And not too far to make them feel like, well, hello, you know, you're sitting, oops, I keep hitting my <laughs> microphone. Yeah, you think I know by okay. now how to it's, use a microphone. It's died on me yet. It's all, <laughs> but um, so those are, those are sort of the biggies. And also where you look. Right. If don't look at, if you're a guy, don't look at other women. Yes. If you're, you know, <laughs> no, don't a gay do man, don't look at other men. <laughs> You know, and again, you know, yeah. if you're a woman, don't be checking out other guys. If you're straight at the bar or if you're lesbian, don't be checking out other women. Don't do it. Yes. <laughs> just don't do it. It's yes. not cool. Yes. If you want to make a good impression on someone, just casually look up or around and then back to them. Mm -hmm. So you've got to look to where the head goes as well. Yeah. Also, head movements, when someone tilts their head, mm -hmm. usually um, that means they're interested or sympathetic, empathetic. Uh-huh. 
right? Yeah. Sometimes, I do that a lot. Yeah, you do. I do. I've noticed that yeah. when I'm interviewing you yes. on LA Talk, you you do you yes. kind of do your head like that, which is neat. <laughs> that means you're into what we're talking about. So, um, so that's that's another kind of thing. So if you don't want to show someone you like them right. before you have the fake call from your friend and leave on the first or second date, yes, <laughs> you do the opposite of what I just said. Yes. You sort of have tight body Mm -hmm. uh, things cross your arms or lean back you know um you do look around it's like you're bored (laughs) look at your watch look at your cell phone you know do a lot of things and that person will get the get the hint that you're not interested in them obviously so i think well i'm going to give you an example because i've I've been kind of churning some things around in my mind as you're talking and just thinking of my own postures and what I do, but there's one in particular. I mean, what what would this mean if you were talking to somebody and you did something like this, kind of leaning, mm-hmm. leaning? Oh, I guess you yeah. you couldn't hear me at that point, but <laughs> <laughs> leaning back yeah. and um, just kind of having my hands tucked in and yeah, a- away from that person. I've noticed, I've caught myself doing that quite a few times, and I think it has been in situations where I'm either uncomfortable or I don't not pat- particularly like the person or you know, get me out of here kind of thing. Yes, exactly. Is that what that means? Yeah, usually. Because, you know, again, it's away movements, and it's kind of easy to interpret. Movements that are open and towards mean, wow, I'm interested. Yes. Movements that are away. And this thing of putting your hands kind of comfortably between Mm -hmm. your legs, Mm -hmm. that's kind of self-protection again. Mm -hmm. That's kind of like, ooh, okay, self-calming. And I'm going to keep my hands right here, and it's comfortable, and I know where my hands are, and mm-hmm. and it it is again sort of away a little yes, bit. Yes. Yes. So yeah, yeah, you may be protecting yourself uh-huh. from an individual, or you're you're very psychic, so you know you you're an intuitive, so you pick yes. up people's vibes. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm also intellectual, so I'm always yeah. picking up the little things. So, yeah. And then I put it together, and sometimes it's right. like. I create the what if scenarios. <laughs> right, right. So I think something other than what it really is. So this is really intriguing to me because it clarifies yeah. some of the things that I've been picking up with other people. Cool. So is there any particular celebrity that you've been watching recently that like oh for example goodness. Lady yeah. Gaga or somebody yeah. like that? I know she's she's a, an interesting one because she's so over the top in her performances, but then when you see her in a different setting, when she's not in performance mode, Mm -hmm. she's a completely different person, or so she seems to be. she does. I like who she is off camera. I mean, I love watching her shows because she's just so cool. Yeah. Her music's amazing, and her outfits are so fun. Yeah. But um, she's a gentle soul, Mm -hmm. I think. I think so, too. Right? Yeah, it was really uh, interesting when I saw her not in performance mode, because you don't really see that much, but Mm -hmm. when you do, it's like, wow, who is that? And she has that ability, like Justin Bieber. Mm -hmm. However, Mm -hmm. she's a woman who's been there and done that, and I think it's truly a pretty nice lady, and so she she is sincere in most of what I've seen Mm -hmm. in her interviews. Really? Yeah, she opens up. She seems to be very... Uh, she does a lot of eye contact. She does a lot of thoughtfulness, mm-hmm. looking up kind of to the left when she's interviewed, but not too much. And she is a professional musician, classically trained. Yes, she, she knows is. her stuff. Mm-hmm. So she has not much to hide no. in terms of, but she also has that ability to flip on the entertainer switch and just yes. become this crazy lady. Uh-huh. And that's so fun. Yeah, and that's why I was intrigued to yes. ask you that because I thought, well, you know, this is like completely night and day. Right. Is there something there or is there, yeah. you know, is she hiding something or how do you switch from right. one extreme to the other? I but think, I think entertainers and actors, musicians, they yeah. have have to have that ability right to do that well some yeah. <laughs> some yeah. don't totally. right? i'm living my role <laughs> yeah how many yeah. actors have, <laughs> what if exactly. they cross their leg like um the r- right leg over the left like it, sort of like at the ankles um sort of like a guy sits yeah so okay you, like you know, the l we call it the l okay like, like a lot of times like when people are yeah. being interviewed you don't see their legs you know like right now mm-hmm. yes for instance yeah. and you can see my right is cl- crossed over my left a lot and yeah and I'm very comfortable when i sit like that. sure so what's that mean <laughs> so if it's like in an l position <laughs> well John? it's it's like an x it's sort of oh do you see okay uh, do you see what it's like? I see, yeah. Yeah, okay. Yeah, I see it, I see it. <laughs> is yeah. he doing ankle crosses? Yes, yeah. ankle crosses. Oh, crosses. that's a good thing. Is that it? means you're really comfortable. Oh, okay. Yeah, that means you're very well, comfortable you and relaxed, <laughs> they curious. say. Okay, yeah, I was just you curious know? about that. Because yeah. we don't ever really see a lot of times with people's body language in the feet, mm-hmm. you know, no. what that means. So. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. That, see, that's what they say about okay. that. So cool. That's good to know. So who, um, <laughs> I guess... 
celebrities you do, of course, but what about politicians or is there anyone really interesting that, Ooh, but even like, e- even maybe like a murder, a serial killer or have you profiled anyone like really interesting that is off the hook with body signals in the negative or? I'm trying to think of some of the more recent. I've been um, doing some pieces on the shooter. Oh. Shooter. Yes. Um, uh, at you know the Seattle school. Yes. Um, also the guy at Santa Barbara. Yeah. And that kind of thing. What I've been doing more uh, because we're not really seeing them interviewed. We're seeing them put in custody. Yes. But what we do get to look at are some of their weird YouTube ramblings. Oh. Some of their I didn't see phone that. messages. Uh-huh. Some of their texts and things like that, which the police and the media are kind of revealing Mm -hmm. and what I have been working on more is is this person a sociopath Mm -hmm. in other words um, chemically imbalanced but know what they're doing or an antisocial personality where there's no conscience right and know that you know this is right or wrong Mm -hmm. as opposed to someone who is schizophrenic or say bipolar one with psychosis right where they're hearing the voices that are saying, these people are bad, you need to kill them. God is telling me that I must save the, I mean, they usually, and so when I mm-hmm. sort of get information about their background, mm-hmm. so this doesn't go more towards the body language thing. This is more towards the, you analyze their background and you get information and clues like a detective about patterns of behaviors. Right. So I've been working on a piece about shooters. <laughs> it was kind of creepy, but um, <laughs> you well, know, no, it's so, so fascinating people to me can because the Santa Barbara one, for example, right. they had mentioned he was on the autistic spectrum, yes. or so. Yeah, so he's supposed to be. Is he truly? Right. I don't know. But well, he, you know, and autism doesn't necessarily mean that someone's violent. He is more, in my opinion, when I heard and read some of his background stuff, the first thing I thought was schizophrenia. Really? Um, paranoid schizophrenia wow. with violence or bipolar one with psychosis where there are voices telling this person and I yes. have had clients when I used to work in a clinic um, who came directly out of jails um, because they were court ordered to serve time for their crimes right. they were not murderers but they had almost committed but they busted them they followed them and found them <laughs> doing strange things um, but they did have voices so clearly these people are chemically imbalanced when they get on the medications antipsychotics it does help but right. unfortunately as we read with the Santa Barbara shooter yes he went off his meds he didn't like the way he felt oh is that what happened yeah oh yeah and they were talking about Ativan and they said he took Ativan to calm himself down well that's that's a tranquilizer that's usually not going to make someone psychotic usually it's going to make them pass out because yes. they're tranquilized but so when he says he didn't get on his meds we're talking about antipsychotics that he was prescribed he was following uh two psychiatrists two years before he did this shooting so he was <laughs> he was not taking his meds obviously so mm-hmm. this guy was truly chemically imbalanced and had voices wow Wow, I didn't know that part of the story. I, d- I just yeah. assumed, you know, maybe being on the spectrum, you know, some people have sensitivity to sound or, yep. you know, th- the stimuli is sure. over the top. I thought maybe that was they the case. Do too. But I had no idea he was on. And this is my meds. this is my analysis, and I it's not fair for me to diagnose someone yes. who I haven't met or spent time with or anything. So, so yeah. listeners don't. Take don't it with get a grain mad of salt. at me. <laughs> Please just don't write me these things. And no, he was a wonderful person, and he never had. I just read the history. Just, that's yeah, all. You're I'm just going by what you yeah, know. Exactly. Yeah, exactly. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, that's that's fascinating to me. So, when will that piece be coming out about the shooters and where? Um, <laughs> I had that piece on my show. I don't know if you want me to promote it or not. Yeah, no, go I, ahead. I, okay, totally. <laughs> I um. Did criminal profiling. Um, uh-huh. Yeah, it's on latalkradio.com, and you can look on my archives. It's yes. Channel One. Mm-hmm. Channel One. Mm-hmm. And it's on LA the Talk couch Radio. with Dr. <laughs> Michelle. And uh, last week I did the whole um, criminal and personality disorder profiling thing. So. Awesome. Awesome. Yeah, yeah, you can check her out at uh, latalkradio.com. Yeah. It's uh, Channel One, right? Right. And it's. On the couch. On the couch. With Dr. Dr. Michelle. Michelle Cohen. Yeah, it's a fun show. She's just well, you know, great. She's, you've been a great guest. Oh, I love having you on. It's, it's so, so much awesome. fun. I mean, oh my goodness. We, <laughs> <She's great. laughs> we always yeah. kind of wing it, and it always turns out great. We do. So we're doing it today. <laughs> kind of winging it. So, John, do you have any questions about body language? I mean, we're going to bring on um, Alex. I don't know if he's called in yet, but uh, we're going to bring him on. 
Yeah, you know. And uh, he's got a couple questions about body language, sure. too. And he's from New York. Great. And, uh, so, Alex, if you're listening, um, call in, please. <laughs> so, uh, I had a few, and I was, uh-huh. I, I kind of, they slipped my mind. My memory's not all it no worries. is cracked up to be. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, what about hands like this? Okay. So, uh, Interesting. Could you demonstrate that's a cool one. Yeah, yeah that's cool. Like, yeah. like, you know, when they're making a diamond shape kind of with their hands. Uh, right. Yeah. Interesting. So, people do, yeah. when they're talking yeah. and thinking. You know, what do you, how do you interpret that, Michelle? How would you interpret I that, would guys? I would interpret it as being thinking or kind of mulling things over in your mind and debating on what to say next. Yes. Or, that kind of thing. Right. I think and I've done that before. And yes. that's That's what I felt with it. And uh, it, it, when you're looking at symmetry, uh-huh. you have symmetry, okay? Yeah. That's control, which is okay. It means uh-huh. they're organized and they're thinking and they're trying to... Mm, right. Symmetry is, you know, you're together and organized, pondering. Mm. You know, when you put your hands in front of your face sometimes, or when you, it may mean that you're covering your mouth. Uh-huh. You may be... Uh, either afraid to say something specifically or you you don't want to come forth or you may <laughs> you know yes. people do this hmm, when they're thinking rather than this yes. mm-hmm. this is like I just don't know what to say I'm uncomfortable mm-hmm. this is like let me think about it hmm that's interesting this right. is hmm hmm <laughs> yes. this is like you see him do Oh, a, my God. I don't know what I'm doing. <laughs> I watch a lot of Shark Tank, and I see a lot oh, of... Oh, I the, love that show. You know, and I watch their body language when right. they're getting pitched. So it makes, you know... Th- and I oh, see this exactly. one a lot. So yes, you yeah. do. Yeah, so that's why I was curious. And so so the people who come on and try to pitch their things, yeah. they do this. Yeah. yeah. That That is like trying to be organized in their thoughts. Uh, it, and, and it could also be, when they put their hands together, uh-huh. it's, a, it's a comfort comforting thing they're comforting themselves like they're praying <laughs> yeah they're praying oh please mr yeah. wonderful be, yeah. give me money uh, you know right that show is brutal i don't I know. know if i could go on there oh no i just wow. you know, i'd be so scared yeah to, me too to I'd, do be, that. I'd probably wet myself <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, yeah. It's, no that's it's a great brutal. point though that really it is, is a good but point i think be. i've seen yeah. it the other way around too yeah. where the actual um people decide oh yeah they do it do, too. and you were saying control right so it's like they're pondering, but they're sh- they're showing a sense of I'm in control here. Or right. I'm the one going to make the decision. Right. right? Exactly. Like yeah. Exactly. I have yeah. another one for yeah. you too. What about when you're putting your hands kind of in front like this and just mm-hmm. clasping, you know, your wrist? And oh yeah, yeah, that's a good one. Michelle. Yeah. Again, that's a common one. Yeah. Again, clasping. You know, the word just clasp uh-huh. is is kind of oh, get ready. Yeah. <laughs> well, if it's gentle. <laughs> Guess who's hand, on the, who joined there us? Go, Alex. <laughs> oh, he's laughing. I hear him laughing. That's great. Hey, Alex. So that class. Hello, means- Mercury and retrograde okay. is playing tricks on me. <laughs> All right. Well, we'll have I was to put like, on. I play, I Just one sec. They're going to put their headphones on and, yeah, and join a, you. We've got to put on the um, yeah the, the hair the headbands <laughs> headbands <laughs> that make us look hideous. No, you guys Attractive. don't look. You look good. You look good. Thank you. So yeah. welcome, Alex. How is it in New York today? Uh, gloomy yet slightly warm. <laughs> yes. So what's what's warm to you though? <laughs> What's the temp? Uh, well, warm to me. I mean, I was born in Des Moines, so anything over 55, I start thinking about short. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's, that's to- funny. It's, yeah, I always joke about that with Alex because I'm from the East Coast, too, and it's like, that's bathing suit weather. weather. What are you talking about? Know. It's 55? <laughs> Let's get naked. Yeah. <laughs> right. Exactly. And make sure you have a hoodie with you. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> So, Alex, we were talking about body language, and we were just doing the the arm crossover in mm-hmm. front. So, I don't know if you've seen yes. that before, but that's, like, totally common. I have a lot of friends who do that. Yeah. I do that sometimes. Yeah. It's, like, one of the biggies. So, Michelle, you were saying that it's another protection. Uh-huh. We were talking about um, specifically Alex. Hi, Alex. <laughs> <laughs> so, <Hello. we're, laughs> Yes, Alex, this is Michelle, Dr. Michelle Hi. Cohen. And Alex <laughs> is our relationship correspondent awesome. from New York. So, mm-hmm. he's, you know, unofficial, but... You know, he's mm-hmm. he's been around the bend, if you know what I mean, yeah. in terms of relationships. So. A lot of wisdom. Yes, Great. Yes, a lot of personal experience. So he's he's an expert <laughs> just based on experience alone. That's great. <laughs> That's great. That's the that's probably the best experience, you know, and best way to uh, hear advice is from somebody who's been there and done mm. that. Totally, totally. Yeah. All right, so back to that posture, because mm. I, you know, like I say, it's really common, and mm-hmm. I'd love to know, because I think when I do it, I'm just mm-hmm. trying to recall if I do it, it's... It's when I'm either nervous mm-hmm. or 
like you said, the protection thing. Right. Yeah. It's sort of a self-comforting thing. Yeah. So if you have your arm out and you put your other hand around your wrist kind of tightly, again, clasping, mm-hmm. that may indicate that you are sort of gearing up for an encounter or you're with someone that you're not really comfortable with. So. It almost pr- it, it creates like an armor or a shield because mm-hmm. kind of sure. that's what you're doing. It's like yep. you're creating your own little shield. Mm-hmm. For Just like you did when you were crossing your legs away from me and kind of putting your hands in between your legs mm-hmm. and, you know, yes. that whole yes. away from body posture. Yes. It is a protective thing. Yeah, yeah. totally. Exactly. All right, Alex. Um, mm-hmm. I know we talked about this before um, the show, like last week, I think. But have you encountered any specific body languages uh, si- or body language signals mm-hmm. in the uh, – the dating experience we were just referring to. <laughs> well, I had the, um, I had. It was funny because when uh, you told me about the show about body language, I thought of you know two stories that I had I wanted to present. But uh, earlier in the show, when you were talking about what actual dating between two men is like, I'm like, <laughs> there's nothing, there's nothing more like open than giving them a blowjob on the first date. Oh. <laughs> Well, you know, that's sure a signal, isn't it? No matter what your body language is. That'll work, Alex. (laughs) Alex is a little over the top. (laughs) That's funny. No, but But, in all seriousness, Alex, but not in public. Come on now. (laughs) Let's tone it down. We have a lady on the show. In a real sense, (laughs) in a real sense, uh, it was funny because the tournament I was in after you were in New York, uh, there's this one guy that I've been just trying to talk to yeah uh, oh, he's a friend yes. of a friend of course yes and it's like it's like it's like he acts like he's scared of me he won't look me in the eye uh-huh. when i speak to him it's like he kind of he kind of can't laugh at the joke when i tell a joke when we're around each other and i saw him this past weekend too and he won't even like he won't even look d- me directly in the face and he always tur- he was sitting across from me at the table and he was slightly turned away his shoulders were turned away from me mm. and he was talking you know, he wasn't talk. He was talking to the people around me, right? And hmm. I'm just like, "What the heck did I do?" <laughs> that, those are some big signals. So nothing yeah. makes you feel mm-hmm. more hideous. Nothing makes you feel right. more hideous mm-hmm. than that. Sure, yeah. exactly. <laughs> so, what do you say, Michelle? Well, um, y- Alex, have you? So mm-hmm. you've clearly indicated to him that you're interested in him. No. Of course not. Why would I? I have to be passive aggressive and hide my feelings too, and oh, cross my dear. arms a lot. <laughs> oh God! Here we go. Well, why don't you? Yeah, I mean, all that stuff you described about him sort of avoiding you, the avoidance body behaviors. Yeah, those. That's mm-hmm. really clear. But maybe he's shy. Do you think he's shy? Yeah. Okay. There no, you go. No, I, I, it, it took a while to process that. Like two weeks ago, I wasn't thinking he was shy. I just thought he just didn't want me to talk to him, right. which happens. Uh, a lot with gay men uh, yeah. when they don't want to talk to you they won't look at you I think me and Michelle were talking about that two weeks uh-huh. ago too mm-hmm. they won't even acknowledge your presence right and, and it, stuff like yeah. that so yeah so you know maybe um, can you just sort of put out there talking to him and say do I you know like a joke thing I don't know I'm just saying yeah I've just tried. like I've tried but he know, won't even, he won't am even I freaking, like acknowledge that right, what sometimes Am I yeah. am I freaking you out or something? I've noticed that you haven't sort of looked at me when I talk to you, but I think you're really mm-hmm. a neat person that I'd like to get to know. I think yeah. you're really a cool guy, and, and you're so good looking. I mean, not to freak him out. No creepy talk. Mm-hmm. But yeah. you know what I'm but, saying? No creepy eyes and creepy talk. Yeah, no creepy eyes and creepy talk. But, but just sort of let him know that, you know, verbally. Mm-hmm. You know how to pick him, Alex. Wow. <laughs> I know, right, Michelle? Where'd you find Michelle this guy? Michelle knows this from my old show, yeah. <laughs> uh-huh. Well, I have to say, I mean, Alex has no soul plane numbers like Justin Bieber, so it's like relationships yeah. are his battlefield, so I think he tends to attract mm-hmm. people like this, you know, okay. that are going to either give him yeah. a personal experience that takes him down the the wrong yeah. road or yeah. those kinds of things so i think yeah. you know i'm just joking when i say you know sure like, where did you find this guy <laughs> right <laughs> but it's, it's just uh, well, the nature of the beast there. i think he's, he's, i'm a magnet for it you are you totally I think are i've realized that in my life <laughs> but what's interesting it seems like you're outwardly like he's outwardly expressing what you're feeling inwardly so it's sort of like, <laughs> oh, yeah no. that's, you know what like that's, you're like, that's, yeah. Yeah. that's a very you know it's like yeah. if you listen to all the spiritual teachings yeah he's a reflection of what i'm feeling on the inside yeah but, you know, oh, oh. your ego doesn't let you think that in the moment when you think you're really well dressed yeah right and look really good and someone won't look at you and you're just like what the hell yeah <laughs> 
Yeah. I would make it a joke. I don't know. I just sort of like keep it light and say hello. Yeah. You know what? Yeah, follow, exactly. follow, follow my finger into my eyes. You know, I would just <laughs> kind of clown around and yeah, totally. really flatter him yeah. a lot. That, totally. Yeah. That would make well, him I've, I've done that too. Oh. Where I've um in in guys previously. They, they would comment on something on me or on my face or on my eyes. And I'm like, well, that's because you've never looked me directly in the eyes. Wow. That's a big well one. Well said. Yeah. I mean, you know, the yeah, eye contact. I that. It's yeah. a joke, mm-hmm. but, you know, yeah. then, you know if if, people get taken aback. But I'm like, Well, if you keep it whatever. light. Yeah, exactly. So how would they respond to that many times when you'd say uh, that? It's, they laugh and, oh, you good. know, it starts the conversation and it opens it. It opens a... A barrier of like, you know, it knocks down a barrier of being uncomfortable with each other, uh-huh. you know, so then, you know, maybe the arms won't be so crossed. <laughs> mm-hmm. Exactly. So I think what I'm going to do, just based on what we've been chatting about, I'm going to flip this a little bit because okay. I just kind of had this aha moment based on what Alex was saying, what you were saying. So we were talking at the beginning about the relationship with ourself and mm-hmm. how it's so important. And I yeah. think that that's one of the reasons why Alex has such trouble with relationships is because of the inner stuff he's got going on. And, you know, when I look at it, it's numerologically speaking, right. but I see the, mm-hmm. the challenges. But if you were to look at them, it would be from a psychological standpoint. But I think mm-hmm. you would probably find the same things that I've found. And likewise, the whole eye contact thing that I that we mm-hmm. were just talking about. Mm-hmm. I had such a hard time with that when I was younger because I was so shy. So right. And now I am I totally make yeah. eye contact do. with everybody. Yeah. And it's just, you know, it's like night and day for me. And I think it had a lot to do with the relationship I have with myself, the mm-hmm. inner workings. Yeah. So let's talk about that because I think okay. if we're going to talk about relationships – and body language and all that stuff, I think that it's a good topic to at least touch upon because not a lot of people know how to go about that. They're always thinking about, well, I need this perfect partner or I need this best friend or I need, you know, the external relationships. Mm-hmm. But they completely either ignore the one that's the turbulence going on within themselves. Mm-hmm. And, I agree. And then they wonder, why right. Why am I attracted? Like, mm-hmm. Alex, why am I attracting all of these yeah. um relationships that go awry or why am I not yeah. attracting the right person and it's probably from what I've seen anyway from the work that I do is it's mm-hmm. usually that inner stuff that needs to be mm-hmm. either recognized or uh, for me that's half the battle it's like recognizing those issues within yourself it's like just the awareness alone mm-hmm. absolutely and I always tell people um, in my private practice that um, you know come to me with their relationship issues or they talk about their problems with their relationships and we start talking about their background and then their self-esteem Yes, and I find that um, it really is important to work on yourself help yourself first and then you'll be great for others is what I always say so kind of discover some of the things about you you know old messages so here's the way I here's the quick and dirty of it okay (laughs) I like that (laughs) ready Alex here we go here we go get your notepad ready Alex um sometimes you know I I have people really explore some of the messages that they received growing up as kids so and again I'm not blaming mommy and daddy or the caregivers come on but let's get real yeah. Um, yes, exactly. You know, when we're in a home and, you know, if we have a controlling parent, an angry parent, a lot of turbulence, a lot of argument, a lot of whatever, and name calling and a lot of negativity. Yes. Um, or let's say our parents don't even argue. They don't talk much. They just kind of skirt the issues. They don't talk about much. But and if we have siblings, we find our place in that family and we assume a role. Yes. So the messages that we're given whether they're verbal or nonverbal, could be, let's just say, I am not worthy. I am, uh, I have no identity. Nobody ever listens to me. Um, Nobody cares. I don't feel loved. Whatever those messages are. And, you know, the research, you are a scientist too, Michelle. You know that uh, we develop neural transmitters, neural networks that reinforce all those thoughts we have about ourselves. So the I am not worthy thought is right there throughout our lives (laughs) and here we are (laughs) you know in our 40s 50 Uh whatever you know and what happens is is that it's there (laughs) (laughs) sorry alex oops i was referring to myself (laughs) i wasn't referring to you alex but anyway um no i hear you you're funny but it, you know, what we have to do is sort of challenge those things as we get older. And that's yes. the cool thing about our brains developing completely when we're 25. Mm-hmm. Because, you know, the frontal cortex is pretty done. 
there. So we have to 25, 25. They're saying now And they allow people to drive. Oh, thank you. Yeah. 16 death on wheels. Mm -hmm. (laughs) You know, crazy. Well, that's why car insurance is so expensive for those adolescents. Mm -hmm. So anyway, um, the thing is, is that, um, what we have to do is sort of rebuff and, and, and really challenge those old messages that we grow up thinking. We also grow up with positive messages. So those are the cool ones we want to keep. You are smart, kiddo. You are this. You are that. My message, one of my messages growing up was, oh, you're just going to be a dummy like your mom. You're never really going to get anywhere. You should marry somebody wealthy <laughs> or something. You know, that was kind of the mm-hmm. underlying. Mm-hmm. And when I became a adolescent, a young adult, I went, the hell with this i'm gonna be a doctor (laughs) so my stance was to go completely the opposite yes not to buy into it and what we have to do is we thank god i don't know where i got that strength from but we have to you know like with alex and and i don't know you alex you sound like a totally cool guy but we have to like switch over (laughs) those those messages we got you know what i'm saying and 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 change, change the thinking and saying wow i was told this but i am not this yeah I am accomplished, I do this, I do that, I'd, and really reaffirm all the good things we are. Yeah, I, I think it's so important. And Alex, I think, you know, that's, to me, that's the key for you to attract, not these crazies. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I mean, because growing up, I was teased a lot by my uncle. They would oh. call me the Filipino word for, um, <clears throat> uh, the Filipino F word for, uh, you know, mm. a gay man. Oh. And, uh, that's and then I was I was overweight too, so my oh. nickname amongst my cousins and sometimes my mother was you know the Filipino word for being fat. Oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. So, See, so that's that plays what I'm out, and, totally. and yeah, it played out in an eating disorder in college and all that stuff. So that yeah. was fun. <laughs> no. There you go, Alex. We're gonna work on you behind the scenes, yes. so we can <laughs> get this uh, nip this in the bud for sure. No, I put it all out there on the air. So, yeah. you know. <laughs> well, maybe that'll be your therapy. Yeah. Well, I want to thank yeah. you, Alex, for calling in. We're, we have just a few minutes left, so I wanted to um, get Michelle's info out there. And but totally, you're calling in next week, right, Alex? Yes, I am. Okay. All right, cool. Yay. All right, so Michelle, how can people reach you? Um, best way is at um, Doc Michelle mm-hmm. at AOL. Dot com and that's doc michelle with yes, two l's that's doc michelle yes doc <laughs> and yeah michelle like my spelling so mm-hmm. you can reach her and exactly. i also see um talkshowtherapist.com is that your website mm-hmm. sure okay, is so and they can contact me therapist.com and mm-hmm. she's amazing if you mm. need a psychologist who looks at all sides of the spectrum go see michelle because she's she's like all encompassing she really takes science and merges it with spirituality but in a practical way thank you so to me it's like practical <laughs> spirituality so it's really cool so michelle thank you so much i mean we could talk about this for days and days because I, I think it's so fascinating it's so important for people to know this kind of stuff because it like we said in the beginning yeah. relationships are everything really they that's really how are. we learn and grow it's so, so true. um to understand ourselves to understand other people is just pivotal so um Look her up. She's amazing. She's got a lot of um, work under her belt related to this and other things, and she's on Entertainment Tonight, so if you catch her on there. um, I don't know how often you're on, but... (laughs) Not as often, only when Oprah does major interviews, they have me come in. Oh, well, there you go. Well, the Oprah effect, so that's good, right? (laughs) Exactly. Be associated with Oprah. (laughs) All right, John, well, thanks for being my tech guy again this week, putting up with me. Oh, I love it. I love it. I'm having a great time. (laughs) All right, everyone, this week, uh, I don't have... Oh, maybe I do have a guest. I'll have to get back to you on that one. I think I have a guest. But anyway, uh, it'll be another interesting show next week, and uh, I hope you enjoyed today's show. Sure did. Thank and we're you. out, John. <laughs> Thank you for listening to Life by the Numbers with celebrity numerologist Michelle Arbo. Broadcast on UBN Radio from the Sunset Gower Studios in Hollywood. Tune in every Wednesday at 12 p.m. Pacific for all things numbers and so much more. We're out in five, four. Three, two, one.